In this video, I want to talk to you about some of the common injuries that we see related to running in our sports injury clinics. If you like this video and you want to see more content from us on how to stay fit and healthy, then don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Anyway, over to the video. Now, it's important for me to say at the start of this video that to truly diagnose an injury and to put a corrective rehabilitation program in place, you should be getting a full assessment because it can encompass lots of different things. So feel free to check out some more information around our site at the links below. But what I wanted to do is give you a summary of some of the common injuries, where you may experience the pain and maybe things to look out for that could help you to run faster, longer and pain free. No better place to start than with runner's knee or what we term ITB friction syndrome. Now, what is ITB friction syndrome? This is a pain that we typically experience on the outside of the knee, on the bony part that you can feel on the outside of your knee. We typically get pain around there that may radiate up towards the hip. Now, you may have heard of the iliotibial band or IT band. It gets a lot of bad press and is blamed for a lot of things. And it's true that this pain is being caused by the IT band creating excessive force on the part where it attaches into the outside of your knee. However, the thing to remember about the ITB is that it really it's a it's a dumb structure. It doesn't have the intellectual properties of muscles and therefore it just gets acted upon and creates this pain. So, yes, it's the cause of the pain or the effect of the pain. But what we have to remember is it's not the cause. Typically, the cause may be problems at the muscles that create this force on the ITB. And these might typically be your glute muscles or your TFL muscle. These are the muscles around the hip uh, that work as we're running. Now, typically what we can find is that they either become weak or they become tight, potentially both. If they're weak, they then become tight as a result of being weak. So what's important is that you're making sure that you're releasing the hip muscles um, and that's with some glute stretching, some hip flexor stretching, some TFL muscle stretching, and that will allow you to be placing less pressure on your knee. Rolling of the ITB is something that we see a lot about. Uh, again, people say that you shouldn't roll the ITB because you can't change the, the density of the ITB, which to a certain extent I agree with. But I think the point that people might be missing is when you're rolling, what you can be doing is releasing the tissues that surround the ITB. So the TFL, the glutes, but also the outside thigh and the outside hamstring, which have a tendency to kind of stick to the ITB. So this can be very helpful to roll out these structures. Patella tendonitis or jumper's knee. Now, this is a pain that is typically experienced almost across the top of the kneecap or just below the kneecap. The patella tendon is the tendon of the quad or thigh muscles. And these muscles attach into the patella tendon, which then crosses over the kneecap. So what can happen when we're running and, and running is a, a straight line sport. So we use some of those straight line muscles of which the quads are a big part of those. They, these muscles can become tight and they can then start to put, create excessive force on the patella tendon, which then pulls on its attachment, which is just below your knee in something called your tibial tuberosity. So if you're experiencing pain when running that you're noticing to be across the kneecap or just below the kneecap, this may be the effect. But again, the cause is the structures that may be creating force on that tendon. So what you want to be addressing is the flexibility of your thighs, the flexibility of your hamstrings and the strength of both. But in particular, at first, looking for adhesions or trigger points in those tissues that you might want to release via some stretching of the thighs, hamstrings and glutes and also rolling of those structures. Plantar fasciitis. Now, plantar fasciitis is a common thing that we see in, in clinic um, and it's a, a pain on the underside of the foot. The plantar fascia is the layer underneath your foot and it's a thick band of tissue. But like the ITB, it's a it's a fascia rather than muscle. So it's structures that just get beaten up upon and, and can become very sore. Now, typically, there's a few things to address with plantar fasciitis. One being that you can look to roll out any of this tissue, any of this binding that you're forming in the plantar fascia or the muscles beneath the foot. And something like a hockey ball can work very well in rolling into those structures. The other thing that you want to check is that the structures that might be pulling on that plantar fascia aren't becoming too tight. 
And these in particular are your calf muscles or your soleus muscles. Now, the calf and soleus muscles are the muscles that are in the back of your leg beneath the knee. Now, these can become tight and create excessive force onto that plantar fascia. So you want to make sure that you're stretching out those as well. Another thing to address when running, potentially on any of the foot and ankle related injuries, is your footwear. Make sure that your footwear is appropriate and we'd always recommend getting your feet assessed by a professional who can guide you into the correct running shoes for you because we're all going to be different. And secondly, you want to make sure that they are offering you enough support. So even if you have great shoes, but you've run a thousand miles in them, it might be that you're not getting enough support from the shoes. So we typically recommend every 500 miles or around six months that we're looking to change our footwear. Achilles tendonitis. Now the Achilles tendon is a tendon that sits in the back of the leg. It actually is a little bit bigger than most people feel. We're probably used to knowing our Achilles tendon as that, that bit just above the heel, but it runs up almost nearly about a third of the way up the leg where it attaches into your calf muscle. But Achilles tendonitis pain can be very common. And again, what we have to remember with any tendon injury is what muscle is acting on that tendon, because that's probably going to be the cause. So in the case of the Achilles tendon, it's your calf muscle and your soleus muscle. Now, we use these muscles a lot when we're running. So, and also any shock that we're receiving off of the ground, the Achilles and the soleus are the first muscles to be absorbing that, that shock. So as a result, very easy to develop trigger points or tightness in those muscles. But the tendon, if we just look to treat the tendon, we're never actually going to cure the problem. What you need to make sure you're doing is addressing the calf and the soleus with appropriate stretching and rolling techniques to release out that tissue. Again, you want to make sure that you've got appropriate footwear, because if your feet are overpronating or you're a heavy heel striker, things like this can place excessive force on that calf, soleus and Achilles tendon area. Tibialis posterior syndrome. Now, tibialis posterior is a, a muscle that sits beneath the calf and soleus. Um, it's much more difficult to locate, much more difficult to be aware of, which probably might be the first time you've heard of this muscle. But it's one that we are really constantly working on with runners because it can cause quite a lot of dysfunction. Now, the tendon dysfunction injury or PTTD that we can experience tends to be a pain around what's called your medial malleolus. Now, on your foot, this is the bony bit on the inside of the ankle and the tendon for this muscle actually wraps around that ankle. But with it being a deep calf muscle, it's a muscle that we're using a lot when we're running. So typically you might be experiencing some pain in this tendon, but not realize where that's coming from. So whilst you want to be addressing the tendon and you can use things like ice or massage to work through that, you want to make sure that you're actually addressing the cause, which is the tibialis posterior muscle, which runs up the inside of the leg. An easy way to potentially find it or to assess whether yours is sore or tight developing adhesions is just to run your thumb along your main shin bone or your tibia. And then if you drop just onto the inside of that, that's where you'll start to feel by pushing deeply the tibialis posterior muscle. If that brings about some soreness, that's a good indicator that there's a problem that needs addressing in there for you. Hip pain. Now, hip pain is very, very common in running. We require our hip muscles so much in running, particularly muscles like your gluteus medius, TFL, hip flexors, they're all used a lot. But in particular, that gluteus medius, which is the muscle that sits on the top of your glutes. Now, this muscle and the role of the glutes in general is to stabilize your hip. So when you lift one leg in your running stride, the other glute medius is firing to keep that pelvis level. It's typically why you might see at the end of something like a marathon, people running with their hips all over the place because those muscles have given out and are, are tight and sore. And if you've run a marathon, I'm sure you've experienced that pain the next day all around the hips and being difficult to walk. So it's very important as runners that we are making sure that we're both as flexible and as strong as possible around the hip and glute areas. So this is a vital area to make sure that you have full flexibility and strength within as problems related to the hip are very common. And not only pain around the hip to be very common, but pain much further down what we call the kinetic chain, which ultimately is a cause by the problem at the hip. So if there's one area that we would particularly focus on runners working, it's that hip area. Check out some of our other videos where we talk through some strengthening and stretching exercises. Lower back pain. Now, lower back pain is something that is common in life. Um, it's predicted that over 80% of people will suffer with lower back pain. But in the running community, again, lower back pain is very, very common. 
Now the result I tend to find in, in runners most of the time is uh, a phrase that I like to use, which is your back hurts, but it's your butt's fault. Because actually, a lot of the time, it's those hip muscles that I've mentioned earlier in this video being so important, becoming tight. And those glute muscles come up and attach into that lower back. Um, and they can cause a lot of uh, pressure, excessive pressure going into that lower back area, which running like any endurance sport, if we've got any biomechanical problem, it will really sort of compound that problem. And that can often manifest itself in lower back pain. So whilst you may be feeling lower back pain, what I would urge you to do is address the hip, making sure that you're working through some glute hip flexor flexibility exercises. And then ultimately, when the pain starts to subside and you want to return to running, making sure that you're strengthening that area appropriately so that those muscles can cope with the demands that you're going to place upon them as you go for your run. In summary, it can be hard to diagnose an injury without a proper assessment. But what I wanted to do is just give you some indicators of the more common things we see and some simple tips and what might be affecting you. The one thing I would urge for every runner suffering any injury in the lower limb is to do a couple of simple tests around your flexibility. The first one, and because these I feel to be the two probably most important general movements that each runner should have, and that is to have the movement at the hip and the correct movement at the ankle, or what we term dorsiflexion. So in order to generally check the assess assessment and flexibility of your hip, have a lay on your back, bend one leg up, and then place the foot of the other leg onto the thigh of that bent leg. The foot that you have placed, that's the side we're testing. Then with the bent leg, lift the leg so that you're taking the foot with you. You'll start to feel a pull around your hip and bottom area. The leg that's doing the lifting, so the non-testing side, we would want to get that leg to 90 degrees. If you can achieve this, we have good flexibility around the glutes area. The second and possibly the most important test for any runner, in my opinion, is what we call the knee to wall test. And this is measuring the amount of dorsiflexion that we have at the ankle. What you want to do is place your foot up against the wall and take the knee over the top of the foot so that the knee touches the wall. What you can then do is start to slowly take your toe away from the wall and keep repeating the test where you take the knee to touch the wall. Now, the important thing here is that you don't lift your heel. At some point, there'll be a distance away from the wall where you're unable to touch the wall with your knee without lifting your heel. And that's your maximum distance. Again, roughly speaking, we're looking for this distance to be about 10 centimetres to highlight that we have good dorsiflexion at the ankle. If we have good range at the hip, good range at the ankle, we know that hopefully the structures in between, so that can be the hip, the knee, right down to the ankle and foot, aren't having any excessive pressure. However, if you have a problem at one of these, it can cause a problem throughout the kinetic chain right the way down. And so these are things that might highlight as a fault for you that you might want to correct.